In today's video, my friends, we're taking a closer look at the Epson EF12 laser projector. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're playing games, watching movies, or just watching standard TV. This will project it onto a screen and give you a quite incredible result. Here I am playing the latest Marvel Avengers game, and I was absolutely blown away with how well it did. But it's great just for watching standard TV, and the color reproduction is also pretty good too. But let's delve in and take a closer look. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. Firstly, just for disclosure, Epson were kind enough to send me this projector for me to review, but they've not asked me to say anything good or bad about it, and absolutely everything I say will be my genuine thoughts. So this is the package that you get. You get the projector, the remote control, the power cable and accessory, and also you do get a ceiling mount and also a power brick holder for the ceiling mount, which is quite a nice touch. This is the remote control, which is simple enough, and I'll show you a little bit more about that a little bit later, but the main star of the show is this the projector now some of the highlights for me is that this is a three lcd rgb liquid crystal shutter it's a laser light source and that means it should last probably i don't know 10 12 years something like that which is incredible it's full hd 1080p but don't let that put you off the picture quality on this is as good as some 4k projectors that i've reviewed in the past it has automatic motorized horizontal and vertical keystone correction as it has has motorized autofocus the recommended screen size is between 30 and 150 inches it has HDMI arc which is a nice touch and there is also a version of Android TV built in the noise level is very very quiet at just 22 to 27 decibels and one great thing which I don't normally feature is that this has a 60 month five-year warranty or 12,000 hours so that should keep you going for most of the life of the machine on top of the projector are just five simple buttons, including an almost instant power on and power off. As this is a laser light source, that happens super, super quick, far quicker than a normal bulb projector. As you can see here, the sound is powered by Yamaha, so we will test that out. Now, from the design, I think it looks pretty good. There is also that little kickstand, which is a little simple button to release, and then you can actually have it at various different levels or have it tucked away completely. You'll notice from the side that there is all the connections on the side and not on the back. And that is for a specific reason. It means that you can rest this on its back and point it to the ceiling for bedtime viewing. But jokes aside, I think the design is really smart. It's got a retro type feel about it, having that hard plastic bottom with that speaker grill around the top. Now, with the remote control, I think that that is okay. It feels a little bit plasticky, but where it feels a little bit plasticky is a disappointment. It certainly makes up for itself in the functions. Having the YouTube, the apps button, the Google Assistant, you've even got focus and keystone correction directly from that controller. So they packed a lot into a little plasticky design. Okay, I've got this set up with my Xbox Series S, and let's see what type of image we get. You can see from the room, I've got the light on. It is during in the day but it still delivers a great image it's 1000 lumens this projector and daytime is not a problem at all providing you just shut a curtain or shut the blind and as you can see from the rest of the room everything is pretty bright and as I pan around you'll see that the image still is nice and bright and crisp on that screen and if you're interested in what it looks like with the blind open right in the middle of the day, well, it doesn't do a bad job. This 1000 lumen brightness definitely packs a punch and it cuts through even when the blind is open. Now, when you set up the projector for the first time, it will set the autofocus and the keystone correction. And this is where effectively it measures the distance from the screen to where the projector is, and it will set the focal length automatically. I found in terms of focus, it was pin sharp. I didn't need to make any adjustment at all, although there is the ability to do so. However, with horizontal and vertical keystone, that might need some tweaking. But you've got a very easy and effective method. I've just sped this clip up, and you can see that there's quite a lot of adjustment both in terms of the vertical and the horizontal keystone. What you can also do if you want to just tweak it even more is set the corners and again you can go in and just drag those corners in and out and therefore hopefully giving you the perfect screen. 
Very, very good, very simple to do, doesn't take a genius to set it up. And it means that if your projector is off at an angle, you can still get a great image. I mentioned earlier about resting the projector on its back and so it can project to the ceiling. And this is a demo of that. And it looks absolutely incredible, about a 60 or 70 inch image from the floor. Now, just think, lying in bed in the middle of the night and all you've got is back to back all things tech videos directly on your ceiling. I can't think of anything better. What's your thoughts, guys? Right at the start of this video, I mentioned that this has Android TV built into it. It's a slightly more limited version of Android TV, and I'm told that there will be additions to the App Store in future updates, and that will be pushed through via software updates in the future. Something like, for instance, Amazon Prime is not there at the moment, but I'm told that that is coming through. As you would expect, similar to a TV and similar to other projectors of this type of ilk, you can go in and make loads of different changes to the picture settings, to the sound settings, and lots of other incidental bits and pieces. I'm not gonna bore you with all of that in this video, but rest assured you can go in and make those tweaks, and it does a pretty good job. Now on to picture quality, and this is where I was pleasantly impressed. I felt that the Epson delivered a very natural colour, and it represented what it was trying to show very well. I felt that it handled the darker areas pretty well. Certainly in SDR mode there were obviously some noticeable lack of shadow detail, but it overall delivered a really strong image, and the colours were absolutely vivid. I did feel that in some HDR scenes, well, it just wasn't that much noticeable a difference, and that's probably to be expected on a projector at this price point. Now, overall, I think that this does as good a job as some 4K projectors that I've seen. It's not all about 4K. It's about whether it does a good picture or not. And this at 1080p was incredible. This I'm recording in 4K, but obviously I'm recording a 1080p image. But it didn't really matter what I put through it, whether it was streaming or whether it was proper SD and HD content. It delivered natural colors and delivered them very well indeed. I also was impressed with the black level detail in most scenes. As with every projector, obviously the quality of the image is determined by the amount of light in the room. So make sure for the best image possible, you've got blackout blinds or you're watching the projector at night. Here you can see the level is really good and the room is really dark. Okay, so how about gaming? I mentioned at the beginning that I hooked it up to my Xbox Series S and overall I have to say that the experience was pretty good. One of the figures that I was trying to find on the Epson website was the input lag time, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Literally, page after page, I went to the US, UK and Europe, couldn't find it at all. And that probably leads you to understand that it probably isn't the best, otherwise it would be reported. I did find, and I have to quote that this is a third party source where they measured it at just over a hundred milliseconds which isn't particularly great it's fine for casual gaming don't get me wrong and I certainly couldn't tell any difference I'm certainly nothing other than a casual gamer and for the majority of you it would probably be great however if you play a lot of online gaming and you're quite competitive then that input lag if it is reported to be what the third party site said well then it might just be a little bit too slow for you but certainly i couldn't tell the difference i enjoyed it i thought it was great i didn't notice any particular lag myself and i thought it was smooth there wasn't scenes where they were choppy or anything like that so overall i was absolutely delighted Okay, on to sound, and inside there is a 5 watt speaker which has been tuned with a Yamaha Audio Engine DSP. This is what it sounds like. HS214 soundbar. This is a 2.1 sound system with a built in subwoofer, but is it any good and is it worth the money? Well, let's take a closer look. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. Sound could be extraordinary. Again. So 
So I do have to say that that is one of the best sounding speakers on any projector that I have listened to. If I was going to be a little bit critical, I would say that I would have liked to have had the ability to go slightly louder. So maybe 20% increase in sound would have definitely been better. But overall, first class, brilliant. So that's pretty much it, my friends. In summary, I think that this is a cracking deal for just under a thousand pounds or a thousand dollars. It delivers an amazing color rich and very natural image and it does the other things pretty well too. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. Please do consider giving it a thumbs up. It does help, help the YouTube algorithm and I do look forward to seeing you on my next review.